You're watching Tang Tools Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Muscle Garage is proudly brought to you by Teng Tools in association with Mount Shop, Meguiar's and Nidakar. Coming up, high-end haulers at Inglewood's Custom Street Rides and home-built hot rods are dying art, Wade begs to differ. Exhibit A, one Model A roads to pick up. But it's those nice folk at Nidakar kicking things off. This week, they fill the tank and point us towards Te Aroha for the 11th annual Aroha Cruisin. The Aroha Cruisin is a spring celebration of classic cars, bikes and hot rods in the historic Waikato Spa Town of Te Aroha. Organised by the local business association and now in its 11th year, Saturday's show and shine does have a judged element, but it's clear to see there were plenty of other good reasons for getting out and about in your old car on a blue sky spring day. Now look at all these cars out here today, you know, they're all getting driven, it's just fantastic, great turnout. It's just something different, like you see all sorts of unusual stuff here, like stuff you don't normally see at a hot rod show. No, it's just a neat atmosphere, you get to see a, a vast variety of cars, and it's all for a good cause as well, you know, we love it. It sits in hibernation all, all the way through winter, so sun's out, time to show people the car, go for a bit of a cruise. 2018's Cruising will go down as one of the best to date. Tiaraha's main drag shuts up shop for the day and it was bursting at the seams with over 550 vehicles hitting town. Among them was Anton, running in his freshly road legal 440 Cube GTX clone, its longest journey yet. Another 68, a Camaro, might be the long game, but in the meantime, the Plymouth sure puts up a good argument. Nah, it's not the dream car, but it's pretty damn cool if you ask me, and um, I've definitely become a big fan of the Mopars now, so I, don't, I actually don't want to sell it now, <laughs> ever. They're pretty much the same as the Roadrunners and, and, and those Super Bs, you know, it's definitely a cool shape, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more happy with it, to tell the truth. Yeah, I was in the country already, it had been in the country for about eight years before I, f I got it. Um, a friend of my wife's, um, I texted her one night and asked if I wanted to buy it and when he told me the price I was like yeah, yeah, hell yeah I'm going to buy it. So yeah, it was the right time, right, definitely the right time, right place. Uh, it wasn't road legal obviously, so it took me about 12 months to get it on the road. I ended up with two and a half pages of, um, of um, things to do for compliance. So yeah, it took 12 months to get all that done and then um, got a warrant on it yesterday, flew through that, no worries. So, so uh, yeah, it's really good. It's, it's doing everything it needs to do so far. And if one Plymouth is good, that's a 1973 uh, Plymouth Duster, running a 340s, numbers matching motor, four speed manual, uh, all original body wise, except for under the bonnet and, uh, and bits and pieces underneath that I've done. Uh, I just like, I'm a bit of a Mopar fan, so I decided to do it. A mate of mine and I went down looking for it about two years ago, and we were going to do it up together. He was a Mopar man, and um, sadly to say, he passed away. And uh, so I've taken it on, done it myself, and it's taken me about two years to get it to this stage. But uh, yeah, loving it, mate, loving it. Just something different, you know, you, I don't know how many dusters are in New Zealand. Um, you, you go Google it on, um, on Google or whatever you do, and you'll pick up Plymouth Duster, and they drag them a lot in, in the States. And it was just something that was unique, different, affordable. So I jumped at it and, yeah, make it my own. I would have liked a 71, but a 73, but um, it does tick all the boxes, it's, it, it goes like a cup cat. <laughs> it doesn't go past the service station much, but uh, no, it does tick all the boxes for me and, and the wife seems to enjoy it as well. We will get a paint job over the next couple of years, but I just wanted it for its uniqueness. It just stands, everybody else has it all nicely well polished up and I thought, no, I'll just keep the patina to it. And the patina look seems to be taking off a bit. So we're just sort of running with that for the time being and when money comes in, we'll, uh, we'll chuck a paint job on it. Looking suitably bad in black was Collins Monaro. I had my first HT when I was 18 and I had it for a year, sold it. And I last year I had an inkling to try and get another one, picked up an HJ last year. And I got that one that had too many doors. And so um, I found this one um, locally in my area and um, I jumped on it. I was um, pretty happy, it was a keeper. It's running a 350, aluminium heads, pacemaker, exhaust system. Street strip cam built in 1969 in Pagewood in Sydney, New South Wales. 69, the year I was born, 
had a lot got to do with it, a bit out of control the prices, but um, it's not about the money for me, it's just to have fun and get out and about and drive it as much as possible, which is what I'm into, you know, driven daily, just about weekly. It's a 1966 XP Falcon Coupe with a Tunnel Ram 351 Windsor in it. The motor actually came out of a 10 second Ford Pop that I used to campaign about 20 odd years ago, So, uh, but it's been detuned since it's been put in that obviously, but uh, still race it on the drag strip. And Well I've always had Fords and I like the shape because it's like American origin but it's New Zealand new. The first year I bought it I went to the All Ford Day and there was 350 Mustangs and only three of these, so tends to be a bit of a labour of love because, uh, yeah, like all old cars, they uh, spend all weekend fixing it and then, uh, yeah, go cruising. But yeah, part of an impressive lineup from Matamata Rod and Custom was cruising regular Tony and one very slick Bel Air. It's a 1957 Chev Bel Air two-door sports coupe, uh, running a 350 cubic inch Chev. 671 blower, twin 600 carbs, through a uh, 704 transmission, so it's four speed overdrive, nine inch diff with a locker head, four wheel disc brakes, it's uh, on full airbag, drives absolutely beautiful. It's about 550 horse. When we change the engine over and put the supercharged engine in it, um, we put a very tame camshaft in it so it is easy to drive. Hey, the wife can take it shopping if she wants. It's, it's that simple to drive. Always wanted a 57. I raced Speedway for years. We were sort of thinking about getting out of that. To be honest, it was my mum, about a week before she passed away, she said to me, look, you're 50, it's time to slow down and enjoy life. And I said, yeah, mum, I do. She said, yeah, look, I know you love your Speedway, but it takes up too much time. She said, why don't you buy the 57 Chevy you always wanted? So that just sort of gave me a kick in the ass and changed my mind of, of what we were doing so we got rid of the speedway car and brought the 57. We were hunting for a while and it was a sheer fluke we found this. I was just looking on Google Images, clicked on a photo of it and it went to a, a forum that had a write up about the car and it had a mobile number at the bottom. So I thought bugger it, I'll ring it. And um, four days later I was on a plane to America. But this was no impulse purchase. The 57 had a few boxes to tick. So long as it was a two-door sports coupe, had to be black, red or yellow and had to have a disc front end conversion. You know, everything else I've got in this thing's just, they're just all added extras, yeah. And a few added extras there are. It's air conditioned, cruise control, electric mirrors, windows, seats. It's got sat nav, GPS, uh, remote start and stop. It's, <laughs> it's got just about anything a modern car's got in it. Amazing results, even at full sight.
you're back with Teng Tools Muscle Garage. Proudly brought to you by Teng Tools in association with Mount Shop, Meguiar's and Nidakar. Right, shed rating time. Thanks to our mates at Mount Shop, this week we're in Inglewood, Taranaki to check out custom street rides. We always had a, always just a hobby, you know, doing up um, different vehicles and always repairing something, you know, always a bit of a passion. Yeah, to build a business and do something that you love doing every day, it's a bit more than just the monotonous doing warrant of fitnesses and, and servicing repair work on vehicles. So, build a business up doing that, um, and it's taken off. She's all go. <laughs> Kev started Walsh Auto Services next door in '94, but took over more of the street a few years later to kick off CSR a full one-stop custom shop. With all specialty areas now under one roof, well, roofs technically, the CSR team can see a project through all stages rather than ship it door to door. And I think essentially that is what the clients really like. You know, like if they can bring a vehicle to us and have everything done from, from, from you know, start to stop, well then it, it, it weeds out a lot of the problems that you do, it does occur. So if we can uh, perfect that, then um, all, all the more better for us and the client, you know, they're getting a, a, a full build from whether we're blasting everything here, we do all that as well. All our panel, paint, mechanical, fabrication, auto electrical, there's, there isn't anything we're doing bar that upholstery. There's lots happening all the time. Even the odd bikes, that's for sure, yeah, paint jobs on bikes, yeah, yeah. And a high-end product means much more than a pretty coat of paint. It means sweating the small stuff from foundations to finish. Can't rush it. It does take a lot of time. There is a mega amount of hours that go into to building something like the Chef truck that you've come to look at today. I think the finishing work is what everybody sees. To get perfection, you just gotta keep striving higher and higher all the way, you know. What also chews through the hours is that this is far from a repeat production line. At CSR, every day is a different one. Well, it is, most definitely is, because when you're building a custom cars full stop, they are one-off vehicles you know essentially you can do one another one the same but there'll be something different about it you know um, the client's budget and whatever they want will make it different so they're always one-off builds to have them finished to the specifications that are no no lesser than a brand new car that you buy from Holden or Ford or someone else you know tomorrow so you know we've got to get them to that standard to be road legal which is a good thing in this country where our standards are so high Unfortunately, a lot of stuff that comes into this country from the States, for example, very substandard workmanship done on them over there, and it just opens up more can of worms for us when they get here, so yeah. One of the most recent full builds is the 1951 Chevy pickup of Colin and Shelley Pope. We got our first look at the slick truck at the Teng Tools Grand National Rod and Custom Show, where it scooped best modified commercial. Okay, so when, when the owners, uh, Colin and Shelley, purchased the uh, 51 Chev pickup, it was 100% stock standard. It had been restored in the States previous to coming here. It was a bit of a rush resto job on it over there. The owner that had owned that vehicle was a soldier. He didn't come back from a tour in Afghanistan, so his parents, I, I believe, you know, put that back together a bit rush. And when it came here, obviously, it opened up a, a few more challenges for us. But now we've done a full custom on it. Um, all the body's been uh, modified as well. The full chassis rebuild. So there's not a lot on that vehicle that hasn't been done. LS1, six-speed Tremac in it, nine inch in the back. A good stance, getting through the build. Uh, clients will say things like, can we have air conditioning? So vintage air in there, Dakota digital instrumentation. You know, lots of, lots of nice stuff to make it a really, really nice, pretty truck, yeah. A one look round CSR will assure you that there's plenty more in the pipeline for this Inglewood workshop. A big thing that a lot of people need to understand uh, from the outside looking in at somebody, they have a, a classic car, vintage hot rod, whatever it may be, that anybody can have that. They don't have to build it themselves, you know, so they come to a place like ourselves to, to have that dream brought into reality for them, you know. And it is great satisfaction in that, yeah, to see that happiness for them, you know. It shows all that hard work that goes into it, yeah. Right, without further ado, it's time now for this week's Maguire's Feature Car. Think home-built hot rods are a thing of the past? Wade and one cool little Model A roads to pick up beg to differ. 
it's four wheels of fun. It's just, it's a car that's going to put a smile on your face no matter who you are. And if it doesn't, there's something the matter with you. The car's a 1930 Model A Roadster pickup. It's running a 331 Cadillac, dual quads, big cam, ported and polished heads, and 9 to 1 compression. While Wade may have always had a fond appreciation of hot rods, building one wasn't really on the agenda. In fact, he was on the hunt for a Commodore when that plan was rapidly shifted about 50 years backwards. Uh, right place at the right time. Went for a ride in a mate's 32 and couldn't wipe the grin off my face. Decided I needed a hot rod. Hit up my friend. He said he had a roadster pickup that was in pieces and that was a good project. Four weeks later it was mine. I thought it would take me 12 months to put it all together. Uh, it took me six and a half years in the end. A lot of blood, sweat and tears. I don't know if I'd do it again, but I'm glad I did it. A welder by trade, Wade's no stranger to a bit of fabrication, sure. But applying those skills to 90-year-old Henry Ford Steel is a different ballgame, especially when a road legal hot rod is the grand plan. Starting with just a pile of parts, a cowl, a couple of doors, the back of a cab, and half a repro RHS chassis in his folks' garage, the home-built hot rod is not a lost art, it would seem, but certainly a daunting one for a first-time builder. Nothing plenty of hours and trial and error can't fix. My time doesn't cost me anything. If you make a mistake and you're willing to throw it away and start again, you're halfway there to, you're halfway there to build an hot rod. Everything on it's custom, everything on it's fabricated, so it was never going to, nothing was ever going to go right the first time and it didn't. So, you know, like I say, first, second, third time, not many times I had to do it for, but. <laughs> the money that these things cost, if you pay somebody else to build them, is astronomical. You know what I mean? You have to genuinely be a wealthy person to pay someone else to build a hot rod. If you want to build, if you want to own one of these yourself and build it yourself, best you learn how to weld. And how, to, and how to play and grind with steel because there's no other way to do it. For a guy who is happily heading down the muscle car route, Wade has managed to build himself a genuine, traditionally styled hot rod. For a first crack, you could forgive this backyard build for wandering way off track, sacrificing the cohesion of a period build for the lure of shortcuts or cost saving. But there was a theme in play with the growing parts pile in front of Wade and he had the right mates on hand for ongoing guidance and inspiration throughout the project. I think the engine that you're going to run in the car helps a lot. Well, it dictates what sort of style you're going to go, you know what I mean? Um, running a 53 Cadillac, it was, never going to be a, it was never going to be a street rod. My friends uh, Dan Tyler and Gary Kendall, uh, owners of Rocket Speed Equipment at the time, that's what they specialised in, building f traditional 50 style, 50, 60 style hot rods. I just love the look of it, rather than the street rods with billet this, billet that, huge wheels. It's 1930s technology, you know, it's 1930s technology being used in 2018. It's just, it's cool. <laughs> Tracks well, it actually goes around corners not too badly. The cross plies don't help it obviously, but they, you know, they've got the, the awesome look. It's got plenty of bumps and rattles, makes plenty of noise and you can hear everything that's going on, but um, no, it's cool, I love it. And while there's more than a few unwritten rules to getting a period car right, it's not to say they can't have character. A number of touches still make the RPU distinctly Wade's. No, I'd like to think the car does represent me. I mean, I built the car and the car, the car's a reflection of me, you know what I mean? I like the whole rat rod thing that was going on as well, so I wanted to try and incorporate the rat rod into the into a traditional roadster. I didn't have a lot of money for panel beating or paint. The tray's full of dents. Um, I've left all the welds everywhere. I just couldn't afford to pay someone to panel beat it. And to be honest, all the little dings, um, dings and dents tell a story of a 90-year-old 90, of a 90 year old car, you know what I mean? And I didn't want to get rid of them. And though it might be some time till Wade feels like attacking another project, the finished hot rod has more than made the challenges of a home build worthwhile. It just blows me away that I actually managed to build a car in my parents' garage. The amount of times I looked at it during the build and thought, there's no way this is ever going to be road legal. And then I just suck it up uh, and, you know, keep doing, do the next job, the next job after that until, until the car was complete. Gets in your blood, gets in your blood. And, um, and it's well and truly in my blood now. You know, I just, I love driving it. The people I've met through hot rodding, I've made so many friends. It's, it's a great hobby that I love and I'll never give it up. Every week we're giving our viewers the chance to win a 10 Tools and Maguire's gift pack worth 250 bucks. 
simply head to themotorhood.com and hit the Tang Tools Muscle Garage link. By entering our weekly draws at the end of the series, one lucky viewer will win a massive Tang Tools 622-piece automotive toolkit and 7-drawer workstation, a complete Meguiar's car care pack and a $500 mount shop voucher. The total value of this grand prize is nearly six grand. Good luck, everyone. Tang Tools Muscle Garage was proudly brought to you by Tang Tools. Get organized. Mount Shop, undercar specialists. Meguiar's, people who love cars, love Meguiar's. And Need a Car, the easy way to research and buy cars online.